Hello there and welcome back to Ovesen.net. Uh, this video is uh, probably going to be short, I hope at least. Uh, I'm gonna build a little cartridge for the Commodore 64. The Versa 64 cart is actually constructed by BWAC. He has uh, developed a PCB and it is meant for, as a development board for a Commodore 64 and uh, it makes it easy to have a, a cartridge with uh, several uh, uh, ROMs in the same chip and uh, you can uh, start whatever ROM you want. And you can switch between different ROMs if you have games or you have uh, utility uh, cartridge uh, cartridge ROMs. You can uh, swap between them. And uh, I actually got uh, my board from uh, Sven Petersen from uh, Germany. So Sven had these produced and uh, he sent me one uh, as a donation. And uh, I'm happy to have one. And now I'm going to build this. The Versa 64 cart is an open source project and you find it on uh, BWAX uh, GitHub uh, site. And um, yeah, here's the bill of materials, what I need to build this. First of all, you need a PCB and uh, I have the version 1.4 and there are newer revisions of this. Then some capacitors and resistors and diodes also. Uh, of course, the most important part, the EEPROM um, 27C512K, I have uh, purchased one of those on Mouser and um, yeah, you can have smaller if you want. A socket, pin headers, jumpers and uh, dip switch. I think I have uh, everything. I found everything I need, uh, socket, uh, jumpers, um, a little uh, tactile switch, tip switch and uh, diode resistors and a little uh, 100 nanofarad capacitors. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and start soldering. I start by soldering uh, the socket and uh, of course before soldering some uh, Flux, of course, that makes everything easy and flowing. The holes are very small on this one, um, so uh, makes it a little bit more challenging, but um, yeah, I think I'll be okay. Come on. So I always solder the corner pins first, just to make it uh, stable. All right, then the rest of the pins. That was the initial round of uh, soldering. Um, I always go through them again afterwards. I think that's okay. I'm gonna cut off the uh, pins. They are a little too long. Then some uh, pin headers and I have these angled ones that uh, goes out like this and uh, I'm gonna use my um, white tack to hold them down. Hopefully it's not that boring to watch me solder but uh, <laughs> I like to see it so uh, some people like uh, the relaxation of uh, watching the soldering job so maybe you are like that. Mm. 
Next goes this uh, five dip switch. Uh, I mean five switches dip switch. <laughs> Maybe I don't need that one. It is, uh, yeah, I can just lay it down like that. Next is the switch for the reset button. That black colored uh, PCB actually makes it a little bit harder to solder, to, to see what I'm doing. I don't know why, it's something with the light. Next up is these uh, four 10K resistors. Three of them there and uh, the last one here. Then I'm almost done with the components. Uh, one capacitor and two uh, diodes uh, are next. Diodes are of course polarized, so you need to make sure you have the black uh, ring in one end uh, corresponding with the, the white uh, marking on the silk screen there. Final soldering, let's do a real close-up on this one. If I can keep it steady. Now I'm gonna clean the board just to remove uh, all the leftover uh, uh, flux and uh, I just use a little bit of isopropanol. That was the soldering completed. I um, think it looks okay. Uh, next then is to, uh, to burn this EEPROM, the content uh, for the EEPROM. So if you read through the documentation on VWAX uh, GitHub, you find that you need to convert the CRT files that you have uh, downloaded and uh, convert them to uh, bin files uh, ready for burning. And uh, actually the voice emulator has uh, this cartconv uh, tool that you can use for that. So to use the cartconv uh, tool, I already copied from the voice emulator to my directory which I have uh, a couple of CRT cartridge files. I have the dead test, Jumpin Junior and uh, Saxon. Okay let's run the command for the three different uh, ROMs and it's uh, minus I for the input and minus O for the output. And then I just repeat for uh, Saxon and for the Jumpman. Uh, the documentation says that uh, this uh, cartridge uh, supports uh, a mix of 8K and 60K images and uh, uh, the Saxon is 20k, so I'm unsure if that one is supported. However, I'm gonna copy and combine with the copy B command. And I'm gonna start with the uh, Jumpman binary and uh, then combine it with the uh, dead test twice. Because uh, uh, documentation says that uh, Uh, you need to uh, combine two 8K binaries 
that is in pairs. Okay, and the output is Versa bin. The burning of the ROM, I'm gonna use another computer or laptop and uh, unfortunately I don't have the U, uh, OBS uh, capture software on this one, so I have to film the screen. Uh, I recently got uh, this uh, EPROM programmer um, TL8662 from China. It was uh, around 50 dollars I think and it works just fine I uh, haven't used it that much uh, you insert the, the blank EEPROM chip close it and then you can burn or program to program you have to select the correct chip and this one is an Atmel AT27C512 so uh, uh, try to find that one at mel twenty seven C. Maybe you can just type the code name AT twenty seven C five twelve R, and it's a dip package. All right, the chip is selected, then I'm gonna load a bin file. And this is the bin file I produced, the Versa bin. And just leave the defaults, start programming from zero, from address zero. Then I'm gonna hit the program button and just program it. And it also verifies that the programming uh, were successful, which it was. Now it's in perfectly. Now I have to read through the manual to actually uh, learn how this works. And uh, for one thing here it says uh, clearly that you cannot run uh, software that uh, is more than 16 kilobytes. So according to the documentation, uh, you set uh, these uh, dip switches and these uh, jumpers here according to what type of uh, cartridge you're gonna have on the chip. Uh, however, I think I started a little bit too advanced, so I'm gonna do it a little bit simpler. So I'm gonna burn only the dead test cartridge, uh, then I can follow the example uh, from Sven in the documentation. Pin detect error, all right. So only get the error now. Pin detect the error and different coins, I don't know. Um, I actually tried to, to blank it and uh, yeah another error so i don't know what happened to this chip anyway i got another chip this is a wind bond it's also 512 uh, kilobits so i'm trying that one then i have to select uh, this chip uh, model uh, in the programmer and yeah let's try to load the dead test bin again and uh, program it now this seems to be working i don't know what happened to the other chip maybe i broke it some way programming successful all right according to um, the example which is actually the dead test cartridge uh, which is an 8k eprom uh, no 8k binary you need if you have a larger ROM set uh, the switches 3 4 and 5 to on so 
these three should be on then. Also, this room is an X room, which means that X room has to be high and game has to be low, which is uh, uh, pin one and two. I mean, switch one and two. And uh, so one should be on and two should be off. So this will be the correct configuration. Then also we need to set the uh, start or the size, uh, which is jumper five needs to be set to switch. I guess it's uh, the middle pin is the common ground. And also you need to set um, uh, jumper six to ROM H, which is uh, this one. So this should be the correct configuration to run a dead test cartridge on this Versa 64 card. So here I have my Commodore and I'm gonna test it now. Exciting! Does it work? Did I do any mistakes? Turning on. Dead test can be a little <laughs> slow to start. Oh, however, it seems to be working. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> nice. And these machines seems to be working just fine, which I knew. So that was cool. Now I want to try some game on this uh, cartridge and I'm loading um, Jumpman Junior. And this is a 16K game. program successful and of course now this uh, versa card has to be reconfigured so for uh, this jumpman game i'm using the example from the manual that says uh, uh, switch one should be off and switch two should be on um, size is 16k then I move this uh, uh, jumper here to 16k and the offset uh, all the three uh, the switches three four and five should be on and the start is not relevant in 16k mode Let's see if this works. Nope. Did not. However, if I look at the documentation, it says here that uh, this uh, game here, Neutron, is uh, x -ROM 0, game 0, 16K game. Uh, however, uh, in the table, it says to put switch uh, 2 to on, which is obviously wrong since both should be low. So I changed the dip switch and now I'm turning on again. Black screen. Also, I think I found another mistake in the documentation. It says here, not relevant in 16K mode, but uh, there is actually a jumper here for 16K. So I'm gonna set this uh, now and then I'll test again. All right, <laughs> actually loaded, excellent. <laughs> Epics presents, uh, well, it's missing probably the name of the game. This should be Jumpman, number of players, no. There it is, all right. <laughs> Oh, this game uh, brings back uh, memories for me. I played the Jumpman Junior a lot when I uh, had my Commodore in the 80s. So I set the player speed to 1. Ok, 
Okay, I probably have the joystick in the wrong port. <laughs> Let's try it again. Oh man, this was fast. I should have selected eight. Next I'm gonna try and combine two games into one EEPROM and um, I have the Donkey Kong and the Jumpman Junior and I just uh, combine them with the copy slash B command and uh, I have the Donkey Kong first and then the Jumpman and the output is uh, versa dot bin which should be 32 Okay, and it is exactly open that file and um, yeah. Versa bin and then program. Success. Now, if my understanding of uh, how this works is correct, uh, which it might not be, then this should load uh, Donkey Kong now. And it does. Excellent. That was Donkey Kong. And then since we have two uh, images on uh, one cartridge ROM and then we should select uh, be able to select um, the other bank which contains Jumpman Jr. so I set these two switches uh, to off and then let's try turn it on and it should load Jumpman yeah it does <laughs> so excellent and then we have uh, also the reset. I don't know if I can switch. Um, yeah, the recent uh, reset switch is working. Can I switch banks when the cart is on? That's the big question. I'll try that. It just freezes and then I can reset. And it loads Donkey Kong. Yeah, excellent. I have to play a little Donkey Kong. Wrong joystick port. That's uh, really annoying that the different games use different uh, ports. I remember that from back in the 80s. Okay, now it's... Uh... <laughs> oh. Come on. No. All right, that was the Versa card. Um, this was a nice project. I learned a lot about the cartridge uh, ROM and binary files, and yeah, how you manage the different memory banks in a cartridge. And uh, thanks to Sven and the BWAC that uh, actually made this possible. No, I can program my own cartridges. So thanks a lot for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video and please subscribe if you want to see more. Bye bye.